ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय श्री चैतन्य चरित मध्य लीला चैप्टर ट्वेंटी टू टेक्स्ट फोर्टीन एंड फिफ्टीन ट्रांसलेशन एंड कॉमेंट्री बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी प्रभु पाद काम क्रोध दाश होया लाठी भ्रमिते भ्रमिते जदि साधु बैद्य पाए तार उपदेश मंत्रे पिशाची फलाय कृष्ण भक्ति पाए तब कृष्ण निकट जाए ट्रांसलेशन इन दिस वे the conditioned soul becomes the servant of lusty desires and when these are not fulfilled he becomes the servant of anger and continues to be kicked by the external energy maya wandering and wandering throughout the universe he may by chance get the association of a devotee physician whose instructions and hymns make the witch of the external energy flee the conditioned soul thus gets into touch with devotional service to lord krishna and in this way he can approach nearer and nearer to the lord do you have that word pishachi i thought i heard him say yeah pishachi you have that same word eh? yeah, mm. Mm. purport An explanation of verses 8 through 15 is given by Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur in his Amrita Pravaha Bhasha. The Lord is spread throughout the creation in his quadruple expansions and incarnations. Krishna is fully represented with all potencies and in each and every personal extension. but the living entities all those separated expansions are also considered one of the lord's energies the lord's sorry the living entities are divided into two categories the eternally liberated and the eternally conditioned those who are ever liberated never come in contact with maya the external energy the ever conditioned souls are always under the clutches of the external energy This is described by Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. Devi hi asha gunamai mama maya duratyaya. This divine energy of mind consisting of the three modes of material nature is difficult to overcome. The nitya badhas are always conditioned by the external energy and the nitya muktas never come in contact with the external energy. Sometimes an ever liberated personal associate of the supreme personality of God had descended into this universe just as the Lord descends although working for the liberation of conditioned souls the messenger of the supreme lord remains untouched by the material energy generally ever liberated personalities live in the spiritual world as associates of Lord Krishna and they are known as krishna parishad associates of the lord their only business is enjoying lord krishna's company and even though such eternally liberated persons come within this material world to serve the lord's purpose they enjoy lord krishna's company without stoppage the ever liberated person who works on krishna's behalf enjoys lord krishna's company through his engagement the ever conditioned soul provoked by lusty desires to enjoy the material world is forced to transmigrate from one body to another sometimes he is elevated to higher planetary systems and sometimes he is degraded to hellish planets and subjected to the tribulations of the external energy 
due to being conditioned by the external energy, the conditioned soul within this material world gets two kinds of bodies, a gross material body and a subtle material body composed of mind, intelligence and ego. Due to the gross and subtle bodies, he is subjected to the threefold miseries. Adhyatmika, Adhibhautika and Adhidaivika. Miseries arising from the body and mind, other living entities and natural disturbances caused by demigods from higher planetary systems. The conditioned soul subjected to the threefold miseries is ceases, ceaselessly kicked by Maya, and this is his disease. If by chance he meets a saintly person who works on Krishna's behalf, to deliver conditioned souls, and if he agrees to abide by his order, he can gradually approach the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. Kama krodher dasha hoya ta latik hai Bhramite bhramite jodi shadhu boidha pai Tarupadesha mantre pishachi palai Krishna bhakti pai tobe Krishna Nikot Jai. In this way, the conditioned soul becomes the servant of lusty desires, and when these are not fulfilled, he becomes the servant of anger and continues to be kicked by the external energy Maya. Wandering and wandering throughout the universe, he may by chance get the association of a devotee physician whose physician, whose instructions and hymns mantras make the witch of the external energy flee. The conditioned soul thus gets into touch with devotional service to Lord Krishna and in this way he can approach nearer and nearer to the Lord. Nama shreshtam manamapi shachiputra matra surupam Rupam tasya grajamurupurim maturim goshtavatim Radha kundam girivaramaho radhika madhavasham Prapto yasya pratita kripaya shri gurum tam natosmi Pandeham shri guru shri ataf padakamalam shri gurun vaishnavangscha shri rupam sagrajatam sahagana raghunatan vitam tam sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Tetanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamstra Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So I've been reading from Sri Tetanya Charitamrita <coughs> Those who are familiar with this Chaitanya Charitamrita know that it's the most beautiful delineation of the sweetest and most munificent avatar of the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, <coughs> full of his beautiful pastimes, uh, but also very importantly, uh, full of his teachings. Uh, <coughs> These two verses which I read, Bengali verses, they are from his teachings. And in these two verses, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu summarizes uh, <clears throat> the whole existential situation of the material world and the purpose of life to get out of this material world, where we go to, and how we go. So our existential position is that we're being kicked by the material energy, figuratively and sometimes uh, actually also. We're suffering, the point is that we're suffering life after life due to our uh, material desires uh, and that we can go to Krishna by 
performing the process of devotional service to Krishna, then we can go to Krishna in the spiritual world. And what is the key factor in all this is to attain the association of a sadhu vaidya. A sadhu means a saintly person. It's a general term for a saintly person. And a vaidya means a doctor. So it's a, uh, it's a figurative term here. Uh, that the doctor, he gives instructions and uh, mantras. That's one, of course, that won't be accepted in the modern age, but <laughs> uh, one method of chikitsa, medical treatment, is by mantras. Especially, um, some diseases are caused by evil spirits, which can be driven away by uh, mantras, certain mantras. <clears throat> so this uh, allegory is there, that we are diseased in this material, it's a diseased condition to have material desires. Those material desires can be driven away by the sadhu, who can uh, by giving that can also give us uh, the process of devotional service by which we can go to Krishna. So in two verses, a huge amount of uh, knowledge is summarized. The uh, essence of all, the, of all knowledge, of all the Vedas and Vedantas. <coughs> and we also uh, find... Here, the proper meaning or the best meaning of the word sadhu, which is actually what I plan to speak about now. What is the meaning of the word sadhu? It's, it's a common word, in India at least, in Indian languages and in the, in the uh, Sanskrit language, in Bhagavad Gita we have sadhu reva samantavya. Such a person, Krishna says, <coughs> Bhajate Mamananya Bhak, one who worships me, Krishna says, with, uh, without being divided in his worship. Krishna says such a person should be considered a sadhu. So it's a common term that's there in all Indian languages. Uh, sadhu. And the, the, the root term sat, sat means. It's another common word in, or in uh, what we may call Indian spiritual terminology. Sat means that which is proper, right, correct, true, eternal, real. These are different meanings of the word sat. And of course this word comes in Bhagavad Gita. Na sato vidyate bhavo na bhavo vidyate sataha. In the beginning of Krishna's instructions in Bhagavad Gita, he teaches that uh, it's it's almost axiomatic, but it's it's overlooked by everyone that 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 which is asat, that which is unreal, temporary, illusory, it will not last. Uh, it never really exists, and that which is sat, or that which is real, it doesn't diminish. So sadhu means uh, someone who is fixed in that which is sat, that which is real, proper, eternal, correct, true, and so on. And in uh, ordinary terminology in, uh, in Indian culture, in Indian languages, the word sadhu uh, means someone who lives a holy life, who has left the world, renounced the world to pursue self-realization, uh, uh, broader meaning, it doesn't, the broader meaning is one who is well-behaved and religious, so in that sense it doesn't, a sadhu doesn't have to mean someone who is 
a renunciant or a mendicant, but it can mean any person who's uh, good or religious or uh, interested in, or, or whose life is dedicated for spiritual purposes, even if they are married. So, but the general meaning of a sadhu is a, is a renounced holy man, a sannyasi. Uh, <coughs> And therefore, we may say the word sadhu to refer to, if, if we see someone in orange colored cloth, dressed in cloth, not dressed in pants and shirt, uh, um, especially if he has uh, long flowing hair and a long beard, uh, who's a Hindu <laughs> or a Buddhist, well, we may say the word for, for Jain also, we may say sadhu, but they don't wear saffron. And in fact, the Jain sadhu, some of them, they don't wear anything, literally nothing whatsoever. <laughs> but anyway, the, the general meaning is some are holy man. <laughs> and Muslims, generally, of course, there are so many, there may be Muslim holy men also, but... They look somewhat different and they're called fakirs or, or peers or like that. So generally it means uh, someone who's in the Vedic culture, Hindu or the offshoots from the Vedic culture, Jain, or Buddhist, like that. <clears throat> and traditionally such sadhus are quite respected. It, it depends. There, there's large class of sadhus who are also perceived as being not, not much more than beggars. In fact, uh, one time, that was during the time of Indira Gandhi, there was a census, national census of India. So they had categories of occupations, farmers, businessmen, and one of them was sadhus and beggars. It was considered, and actually sadhus they are, bhikshuk, the word is there, which means a beggar. But the idea, that, the idea is that if a sadhu comes to beg for you, that's for your good fortune. And of course, there are people who take advantage of that. And th therefore, it used to be just like I did. my youth, I remember, Bora Bazaar, Calcutta, you know, all the Marwari shops. And there were, there were sadhus would come around daily, and they'd all they'd, the uh, shopkeepers would keep five paisa, lot, many five paisa or ten paisa coins, just for the sadhus. That's all. Just give it to them, and then they'll go away, and they won't bother you anymore. And if they go to enough shops, they'll get enough money to buy their biris and ganja or whatever, whatever else they want. <laughs> so such sadhus are not respected very highly, who are literally just living on people's sentiment. But still, uh, many sadhus are respected, and if, if a sadhu can uh, cut a profile at least, or somehow or other win the respect of others, uh, then people will tend to respect them. I'm talking about India here. Uh, and uh, naturally, there has been a lot of out, or there is a lot of outcry about people who are respected as sadhus, saintly people. That's a simple, simple way to say the term, saintly people. When it, or when, <laughs> if it becomes find, found out that they're not actually so very saintly. Uh, Especially, it's not at all appreciated in India if a sad, someone who's supposed to be a renunciant of the world is clandestinely having some sexual relationship. Uh, it's not appreciated because the, to renounce uh, sexual desires is not at all easy. And... But sadhus are supposed to live separately from uh, females. Uh, 
Uh, and if they don't, if they're, if they're taking uh, money from the public and being respected by the public, but secretly they're having sexual affairs, it is very, very much uh, uh, disliked by the Indian public up to the present day. And there have been uh, some high-profile sadhus over the years who have been exposed for not being so very saintly. Uh, <clears throat> and many people have lost their faith in sadhus altogether. They think that they're all bogus. <clears throat> uh, but still, there are some who are widely respected. <clears throat> and uh, that respect, if someone is respected, that respect can be used or utilized to influence people in various ways. Just like, for instance, up until recently in India, for about 20 years, it was very common to see photographs of a gentleman called Sachin Tendulkar all over the place because his face, his name and his face were very well known. So he was being, that he was hired by companies, advertising agencies to promote so many different things. And, and uh, who else? This Amitabh Bachchan advertising practically anything. Because the, it's uh, by association with such a well-known and popular person, it's presumed that if we advertise our product, uh, Amitabh Bachchan uses, he recommends Parker pens, okay, then that will uh, promote the sales of such goods. Mm. Uh, in recent times, uh, uh, such a technique is going on in relation to uh, all kinds of uh, household items and uh, health, med Ayurvedic medicines. It started off with Ayurvedic medicines with one uh, well-known sadhu of North India who's not actually directly involved in business, we're told. But uh, he lent his good name, and he has a good name. He's a clean sadhu in that respect. He's not a not a uh, <clears throat> lecher, debauchee, <clears throat> not at all. So he lent his name to Ayurvedic medicines, and eventually that became toothpaste, and then cosmetics, and, and then it's uh, floor cleaners and all kinds of things. <clears throat> And, uh, oh, okay, so I'm just making the point that there's uh, at least one well-known and well-respected sadhu in India whose name is uh, intimately connected with all kinds of uh, medicines, household goods, cosmetic items and this and that. And from what I'm told, what I am told, uh, they do produce uh, quite good quality products at reasonable prices. So, all right, that's good. Uh, but uh, the question arises that, uh, well, increasingly it may be seen that the identity of such a Sadhu becomes more, he becomes more known for the business than for whatever he's teaching. This particular sadhu I'm talking about is came to fame as a teacher of yoga. By yoga, I'm using the word yoga in the way that it's colloquially known at the present time, not the original meaning of the word. Uh, various physical techniques, exercises and other physical techniques for uh, good physical health. Uh, 
there, there are other sadhus uh, who are um, <coughs> at the present time in India who are uh, politicians and although they're known as sadhus and they're dressed as sadhus but they're they're known not for their spiritual teachings but for their political activities and administrative activities <coughs> and it may be that the, the, the sadhus who I'm referring to are doing a good job overall as uh, in promoting business which is uh, it may be the business may be doing good service to the people of this country and the, the sadhu may be doing a good uh, sincere job as a politician although it's uh, practically impossible as a politician to satisfy everyone but uh, uh, but uh, what is a sadhu <laughs> that's the topic here uh, sadhu means someone who has dedicated their life for spiritual understanding and sadhu vaidya who helps others to become free from birth and death renounce person now it could be said that well it's a good thing that sadhus are getting into business and politics and who knows what else they could become we might maybe in a few years we'll see the uh, Indian cricket team in saffron there will be <laughs> sadhu this uh, the first batsman and so on uh, they probably have to uh, not have long flowing robes uh, and theoretically we could have uh, sadhus in all kinds of professions and maybe they do a good job but I suspect that most people would prefer that sadhus be sadhus they should speak on Shastra the revealed scriptures and give instructions if they're going to be involved in public life, we're not saying they shouldn't be involved in public life, and even politics and business. They can give advice to politic, politicians and businessmen and anyone else. But if they themselves become so much involved in it that, that their role as a sadhu is overshadowed by their role in politics or business or cricket or, or whatever, then the distinctiveness of them as a sadhu becomes lost and then sadhu means just anyone else it's just that they they have the name of a sadhu and the dress of a sadhu but they're not really doing the work of a sadhu so sadhus are supposed to speak on shastra and it, it's not just that they advise others because there are many people who advise others just like this uh, analogy is given of a sadhu being like a doctor so a doctor gives advice but it's not that every doctor is a sadhu or a politician may give advice but it doesn't mean that a politician is a sadhu or a, a parents may give advice but then our teachers give advice but sadhus at least according to the or the actual definition and understanding that's been coming down since time immemorial the sadhu is one who gives advice on how to become free from this entanglement in this material world and uh, <clears throat> most specifically a sadhu is a devotee of Krishna who gives information about Krishna so even sadhus may give advice and they uh, uh, they may satsangas are there very well known people come together and they listen to a sadhu 
and the sadhu gives talks, just like I am giving a talk now. Uh, so, uh, sadhus, they give talks and give, in, in which they give advice to people in how to improve their lives, but if the sadhu gives advice on personality development or how to cure boils, uh, how to get your children to be serious about studies, if their talks are a lot of jokes or telling entertaining stories, even if the entertaining stories are on subjects which are derived from scripture, that sadhu is not really doing what a sadhu is supposed to be because a sadhu is very serious business. Again, the example of a doctor. If you go to a doc, you have a you have a disease and you're seriously suffering, and the doctor just tells a bunch of jokes and sends you away, well, that's a useless doctor. He's got to give you treatment. He's got to actually treat you. He's got to get to the point. He might be a very popular doctor for telling jokes, but he's not a doctor. He's got to treat you, and the treatment means you. He's got to give you. He's got to know what he's talking about. He's got to uh, uh, give you specific treatment which the patient has to follow. Uh, it may not be to the patient's liking. They may say to the patient, now, uh, now on for the rest of your life, you can't eat uh, sweets. You have to stop that altogether. And you may not like it, but you have to follow it if you want to get cured. It's a serious business. One goes to a doctor for... You expect the doctor to be very serious because he has a very serious role to play in human society. And he might be a good joker on the side. <laughs> he might, apart from being a doctor, he might be good at telling jokes. and enter, But that's not what makes him a doctor. Uh, that's not his duty. His duty is to cure you by the prescribed method. So similarly, people may like to go to sadhus who are very uh, expert at speaking in a way that people like. But if at the end of all of it, if you're not gaining guidance, clear understanding of how we are suffering in this material world and how we can be free from this suffering and how we can revive our original blissful Krishna consciousness, and go to Krishna in the spiritual world, then uh, what's the point? <laughs> what's the, how is the sadhu a sadhu? It's not the dress. After all, uh, anyone can dress like this. You can, in a drama, someone can dress up as a sadhu. <laughs> and they may play the role of a sadhu, but then after the drama's over, then they go back to being a, uh, just like anyone else. So a sadhu is a very distinctive role within human society. Of course we say sadhus are renounced from the material world, but they may involve in it for the, ben for the benefit of others. What they've received, what they've understood, what they've realized, they uh, try to bring that to others. But that means to bring to others to people who are in material consciousness, who are entangled in material life. It means to bring them something different, something higher, something better. Mm. There may be many jokers, many magicians uh, who can perform tricks and out of they have a sleeves and out of the sleeve they produce a watch or something like that. There was a, a famous uh, sadhu or actually they used to call him Bhagawan, God, who was well known for producing watches out of the, well, it's supposed to be out of his hand, but it was probably out of the sleeve of his tunic. Uh, it didn't say, you see on the watch, it would say Rolex or something like this. It, wouldn't, it, was, it was already a brand which was already there. It wasn't Sai Baba, oops. It wasn't something that he had produced originally. Uh, he never produced, for instance, motor cars. Here's a motor car, boom. But only things which 
Maybe that he was hiding them in his tunic. Maybe. He was a magician. Good magician. No doubt. Uh, but that's not the job of a sadhu, to do magic. Or to promote toothpaste. Or to be a politician. Or anything else but to direct people toward the real goal of life, which is to understand who we are. We are eternal living beings caught in the vicious cycle of birth and death. And how we can get out of this vicious cycle and revive our eternal blissful life in the service of Krishna. So if sadhus don't do this, if they do, or if they become known for doing other things, then the whole meaning of the word, or the whole role, or the whole understanding of it means to be a sadhu is different. Uh, <coughs> Nowadays, it's uh, thought that sadhus, they should organize hospitals, feed the poor, uh, schools, especially for the poor, and so on. But actually, this is also a relatively modern idea. Christian missionaries in India started doing this, and then some other people, Hindus, who call themselves missionaries, they started doing the same thing. Of course, I think that mission, they, they had a court order which said they're not Hindus. But anyway, they're generally thought of as Hindus. So, so now it's thought that the duty of sadhus is to organize health care, things like eye hospitals and eye camps and so on. It's a, that's what sadhus should do. But that's not traditionally the duty of sadhus. It's not that it shouldn't be done, but that's done by wealthy grihastas or whatever. They organize such things. But now the sadhus have taken it as their duty People expect them to do it. <clears throat> but the sadhus have more important things to do. There may be eye camps. There may be hospitals for curing the body. But the sadhus, they direct people to that knowledge, to that way of life, by which people can be uh, elevated to the position beyond birth and death so they don't have to get born again, so they don't have to enter a hospital ever again. That is the duty of a He has more serious things to do than to attend to the needs of the body. Now people may think, well, what could be more serious than that? If they think like that, that's because the sadhus are not doing their duty of teaching that the body is temporary. The body is only important in as much as we can utilize this body. Uh, this very rarely attained human body for the sake of crossing over the ocean of material existence. Uh, this uh, human body is compared to a good boat for crossing over the ocean of material existence. And Guru Karnadhara, the Guru is a, the captain, able captain of the ship. <clears throat> so if the guru, uh, he's the captain of the ship for sailing over the ocean, and instead he tells some stories and jokes, and that's all, <clears throat> then you may have a good boat for crossing, or he's just concerned with keeping the boat well repaired. The, the main thing is to keep the boat well repaired. And so everyone's very anxious to keep the boat well repaired. But the boat is meant for uh, crossing over the material existence. Mayanu kulena nabas vitaritam. And uh, Krishna says, speaking this verse, Mayanu my the favorable wind is given by me. That is the instructions that I give in scripture. Puman bhavab ding nataret sa'at naha, Krishna says. If you have all, if if someone has all these facilities but fails to cross the ocean of material existence, simply committing suicide. So the sadhus, 
unless they teach people these things. Uh, the most serious thing, more important, more important than keeping the boat intact is utilizing the boat to cross the ocean. So if we simply give advice how to keep the body healthy, but we don't tell people that after all, you get body after body after body, now utilize this body to go beyond the ocean of birth and death, to go back home, back to Godhead, then that is not the duty of a sadhu. Uh, <coughs> So nowadays people expect people, the sadhus, to do uh, <coughs> mundane or bodily, well, bodily and social welfare work. <coughs> it's unfortunate because sadhus, they have a more important duty and the human form of life is meant for more than this. But now that sadhus are getting so much into teaching things like personality development and life coaching, all on the mundane platform, uh, and opening hospitals and schools for teaching people not how to get free from birth and death, but how to get more and more entangled in birth and death. It may be that uh, in future people will think that, that well, sadhus, they're supposed to be in politics and business. <laughs> because these prominent sadhus by their very lives are redefining the role of a sadhu. But the real duty of sadhus is to be detached from all this. We don't say that, there, of course, there is a role in human society for business and politics and medicine and, and bodily welfare work and so on. But <clears throat> the duty of a sadhu is himself to be absorbed in ah, Spiritual consciousness, Brahmanishta, to be absorbed in spiritual consciousness and to guide other, others spiritually. Now, there are sadhus in India up to the present time who are doing this, but they're not the superstar sadhus. They're not the ones who get millions of hits on Facebook, the ones who are patiently, uh, faithfully, honestly teaching others what they need to hear. They don't, they don't hit the high popularity stakes. Uh, people are foolish. They, they like to be, they like to get something which appeals to their senses. But then that's the duty of the sadhu to advise them how to go beyond that foolishness and to, to go beyond the platform of simply being entertained and come to the platform of real knowledge in Krishna consciousness. So, I'm also, I don't have a long beard. Uh, I have saffron cloths. I have the marks of a sadhu. So I, I can simply advise uh, as we're reading from Chaitanya Charitamrita, Ekanta Ashray Koro Chaitanya Charane. Fully take shelter of the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, study and live according to the teachings of Bhagavad Gita as it is. And Haren Nama Haren Nama Haren Nama Eva Kevalam Kalo Nastreva 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 Gatiranyata. Chant the holy names of Krishna. There is no other way, no other way, no other way for spiritual uh, advancement, for reaching the ultimate goal of life. In this Kali Yoga, there is no other way. Uh, I personally uh, cannot fathom my own good fortune in, uh, by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, having attained the uh, shelter of a genuine sadhu, vaidya, uh, by uh, uh, Sri Guru, uh, Jagat Guru, the Guru of the whole universe, Srila Prabhupada, who very kindly taught us not to be entangled in this material world, to understand that everything here is temporary, and prasthasmatu bhavanyo vyakto vyaktat sanatana. Yasa sarveshu, bhuteshu, nashyatsu, navinashyati. 
beyond this material world, where everything is temporary, asat, there is the spiritual world. Everything in this world is ultimately destroyed, including the material world itself. But the spiritual world is ever existing. So, as a genuine sadhu, Srila Prabhupada taught us uh, to look to that spiritual world, Amtad Vishnu Paramam Padam uh, Sada Parshanti Surya Diviva Chakshura Tatam Yadjiva Vipanyava Vishnu Yad Paramam Padam to look to the spiritual world, look up to the lotus feet of Vishnu in the spiritual world. He kindly taught us to do that and uh, only he asked in return for this great gift that he gave us to uh, what, what this knowledge that we have received to try to communicate that to others. So uh, out of gratefulness to him and as my duty I must simply advise anyone who is willing to listen uh, do not be uh, en uh, enchanted by this material world. Uh, take the guidance of actual sadhus. Understand who a real sadhu is. And uh, take their direction to become free from material existence and go to the spiritual world with Krishna. And to the sadhus who say, well, be a sadhu. <laughs> uh, and to everyone in general, uh, know who is a sadhu. One should know what is the characteristic of a sadhu. In Kali Yuga, everything's mixed up. Everything's very, very strange in the modern age. But then, then what a hope is there in this Kali Yuga? The sadhus have to give guidance. So let them be sadhus. And let let the businessmen be businessmen, the politicians be politicians, and entertainers be entertainers, and welfare workers be welfare workers. There are all kinds of people in the world. The sadhus are required to tell people about their highest duty in life. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Anything there? No. Okay. Hare Krishna. Question. In Tirupati, uh, in the Iskon temple, near the Iskon temple, near the Iskon temple, uh, there is a school. There is a school, uh, which is run by Iskon devotees. Yeah, yeah, okay, all right. Well, I can, I can guess what the question is. I was talking on principles. This International Society for Krishna Conscious is supposed to follow the principles given by Srila Prabhupada, which means the principles given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So I was talking on principle. If it's not practically followed in ISKCON, that's another question. Mm. We should apply the principle, see the principle. It's not simply by putting a sign ISKCON that everything is perfect and pure. We have to, just like by just by dressing in orange cloth, someone doesn't become a sadhu. So simply by putting a sign sadhu, or sorry, iskon, it doesn't mean that it's actually properly following Srila Prabhupada. But that's another whole question altogether. Very big question. Hmm. So you didn't get as far as answering, asking the question, but I gave a general answer to, to it.
Yeah. So, some other question. Okay, you ask a question in the meantime. Go ahead. Some people say or may claim that what's wrong with that? Food? Some people say, yeah. <laughs> I'm just thinking of Bengal. In Bengali, in Bengal, we always used to get this. Oneke bole. Many people say. <laughs> Many people say, and I would stop the question right at that point, and I would say, it doesn't matter what many people say, we have to follow what Krishna says. And I was just listening to a conversation with Srila Prabhupada, and one man is in Hyderabad, and Srila Prabhupada was saying that Krishna says this, and the man said, well, so-and-so Swami says this, and the other Swami says they all disagree and Prabhupada said, I don't care what any of them say. It doesn't matter what any of them say. We have to take what Krishna says. And he said, no, no, but all the other sadhus, they're saying this. And Prabhupada said, no, we have to take what Krishna says. That's all. So that was the point Prabhupada made. He said, you can, Prabhupada said, you can bring thousands of people and they, they all say this, this, that. We have to take what Krishna says. That's all. That was, that's what makes Srila Prabhupada so bona fide. Simply takes what Krishna says. There may be thousands and millions of people saying other things. Mm. So? so? The point is that some of the sannyasis in Eastern, they do repeat knowledge, but then on the other hand, they also... Yeah, they have a double life. They have also Dr. Jekyll like, and um, Mr. Hyde. Schools on this and that. It makes it difficult for people then. It makes it difficult for people to run. But that's what I'm saying. I'm, I was just talking about someone, he may be a good sadhu, in his, but, but he's well known not for being a good sadhu, but for promoting toothpaste and so many other goods. So he, people know him for that. Or someone may be a good sadhu, but, but he's... I know. Well, I think anyone who's up with current affairs in India knows that the chief minister of, what shall we say, one of the major states, if not the main, of India, is a sadhu. <laughs> but no doubt he's now so busy being the, administering the state that he doesn't, does he still have time for doing all his sadhana and bhajan and all this kind of thing? Can he think, or even when he's doing it, is he thinking about God? Is it, or he, so it may be that a sadhu does one thing which is worthy of a sadhu and something else by which he becomes well known. It's not recommended in Shastra, which he's supposed to be teaching. And it, and it becomes that he has to he has to live according to the profile of a... Say, for instance, someone is a sadhu, but he's also promoting, we have to feed all the children so they can go to school and then we'll build up the nation. And he has to say like that. Which is, which is not what a sadhu should say. Someone may say that we have to send the children to school so they can build up the nation. But this building up the nation idea is exactly what Krishna, when he met the sadhus at Kurukshetra, this is long before the Kurukshetra war, at the time of the solar eclipse, he addressed the sadhus there. <laughs> that... <coughs> Krishna said that anyone who identifies with the body as being the self, who thinks of his wife, home, children and place of birth as being glorious, uh, who goes to a holy place simply to take a bath without taking instructions from you, Krishna said to the holy people. Such a person is no more intelligent than an animal. Uh, so a sadhu is, Krishna was praising these sadhus because they taught people not to be attached to the body, not to be attached to the family, 
not to be attached to the country. But then if the sadhu, because he's promoting uh, some charity to collect money, to feed children, then he has to say what's required. Yes, we're developing the nation, we're building the nation. He's just saying the opposite of what a sadhu should say. So it becomes contradictory. So in, in one meeting, he goes to one meeting and says, Ladies and gentlemen, donate to feed the children, build the country. Then he goes to another meeting, and then the next meeting he says, all this attachment to the body and to the country, it's all illusion. Huh? How can he give one message in one place and another message in another place? Then he becomes not sadhu. Sadhu should be the same. His message is the same everywhere. Of course, it may, be, it may be presented differently according to time, place and circumstance, but it has to be the same message. And that's another reason why we can uh, place great faith in Srila Prabhupada. We have recordings of his from 19 speaking since 1966 through to 1977. And he spoke the same message. It didn't vary. Uh, it may have been uh, more simple or more complex. Uh, actually, it was never very complex. He always presented very simply. Uh, he may have been speaking to a few disciples or a few non-disciples or guests who came to visit him or to people at a public program. But it was the same message. He didn't change his message. The same message that everyone needs to hear consistently. We should take the example from the great sadhus. If we're to be sadhus, then we should sadhu marganu gamanam. Rupa Goswami tells us one of the principles of devotional service. Rupa Goswami tells us taking instruction from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is to follow the path of the sadhus. Mm. So there's a question there. Okay. <laughs>